Good morning. My name's Harsh Reality, and I bleep out cuss words after saying them. So, let's get straight in to the meat and potatoes, as I know that's why you're here. So I want to talk about two things, in particular, in the Idaho 4 case, that have been bugging me. They've been playing on my mind. And I want to know if they're playing on your mind, and maybe you can help me fully understand them. And let's talk about the first one. So the first one was Brian Koberger wavering his, you know, the extradition rights. He wanted to get back, and it was speculated with law enforcement that, look, he wanted to get back because he was anxious to know what evidence law enforcement had on him for probable cause. And look, it has been said that, look, ultimately he knew that that would have just been delay and inevitability. So perhaps he just wanted to get back because he knew he would end up going back anyway and perhaps fighting it would not do him any, do him any favours. The flip side of that coin is it wouldn't have really have made any difference if he's guilty and if the evidence existed. So I personally feel that perhaps Brian Koberger did indeed want to know what evidence they had. And that's where the problem lies. Because look, this guy, we've said multiple times, he weren't stupid. He weren't a, th a, a thick person. He was educated. He had studied criminology. He was looking to work in the field of DNA and, you know, all sorts of things. He wasn't a stupid guy. That's my point. And people have said, look, you can be book smart, you can be street stupid kind of thing. And also people have turned around and said, look, in the heat of what happened, mistakes could have been made. But this is what my problem is. Now, when the dust settles and everything dies down and all of a sudden you find yourself arrested, it's not hard to think back and understand what the evidence is likely to be. He knew he drove his own vehicle, and he must have known the likelihood is, is that he was caught on camera driving it. Unless he was so stupid that he didn't think that he would have been seen driving his car in that area. Surely, driving around that area, he would have seen the people that we saw, likely saw law enforcement in the area that we know were a stone's throw away from where all this happened around the time he was there. Also, he would have known by this stage that he had left the knife sheath behind. He would have known that. He would have known that. You know, you're going to get back and think, oh, oh, oh no. I've left the knife sheath behind. So he knows law enforcement have got the knife sheath. And also, the likelihood is he knew there was a witness there. Because, look, ultimately, he didn't check every room. He didn't go everywhere in that house. He would have known that. Surely, he knew who lived in the house. He must have done. So, look, it's not making sense to me that he was so confused about why he was indeed arrested when to everyone it's pretty clear why he got arrested because we've gone over and over time and time again the stupid mistakes he made and in hindsight i'm sure that even he would have been able to think about the mistakes that he made and have time to consider those mistakes but that's not the biggest one the biggest one is with regards to his visual snow now i've seen multiple videos done on visual snow and people have turned around and said look he perhaps didn't see dylan when he was leaving that property due to his visual snow trip drop over at crime circus he got shot down because he apparently downplayed how bad visual snow was and he's just done another video with a new representation of visual snow and when you look at that representation 
and what people are saying visual snow is and how bad it is, you could turn around and say, okay, if he's got it that bad, it makes sense that he did indeed not see Dylan as he left that property. But then I think to myself, but hold on, this guy then left that property and he got in a car and he drove all the way home without incident. Now, if his vision was so badly impaired and further exacerbated by the flow of adrenaline through his body because of what he'd done, then how did he drive without incident at pace? I'm just saying, surely if you are in a position where you have done this crime, you have walked past someone and not seen them because your visual impairment is so bad, then how do you then safely get in a car and drive? Surely his vision would have been impaired to the point where his driving would have been hindered. And look, maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's nothing, but we have all considered whether there was someone helping Brian, whether there was indeed a second person. Now, what if Brian was simply the driver and adrenaline didn't come into play at all? He was just driving someone else. Or what if Brian wasn't driving and there was someone else driving the car? Remember, Brian himself did turn around and say, had anyone else been arrested? We've seen the documentation surrounding this case that gives a nod towards a potential co-defendant. And look, we've seen the likes of the lawyer you know, and he has stated, it's not stating that there definitely is one, but they're certainly not putting to bed the fact that there could be one. And there are, of course the gag orders around this case. It does seem that they want to keep things under wraps. And I do wonder why. There are so many things out on the peripheral of this case that do not make sense. Let's touch on Hannah Clare quickly. The Hannah Clare case. There is apparently an ex-roommate of Hannah Clare that is claiming that Hannah Clare did not die of an overdose, that she, in fact was killed in a manner similar to those that died at the 1122 Kings Road property. And they are apparently trying to reach out to the family of the slain in Moscow, Idaho. Now, is this person so sick, so twisted, that they've made this story up? They certainly do exist, but you have to ask the question. There is other videos... Is it true crime time who recently did a video regarding Brian Koberg seen seen jogging in an area that another crime similar to the Idaho crime took place an unsolved crime so many things that don't make sense but tell me why would Brian Koberg not understand why he's been arrested if indeed he did the crime and he would have been aware at this point of the multiple things that he did and didn't do that could have indeed led him to be caught. He's not stupid. And also, like I say, the visual snow. How is it that he doesn't see someone literally feet away from him, but yet he is able to drive perfectly fine without incident? What do you think? What are your things around this case that rarely stick out to you as oddments, things that don't sit right. And I'll catch you all in the next one.